Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 4D, where we're going to explore the consequences of X inactivation. Remember we said that X inactivation occurs early in development when each embryonic cell chooses one of its two X chromosomes to inactivate. A consequence is that we see patches of tissues with one or the other X chromosome active, and we particularly see this very clearly in the fur of calico cats. It's nice to have an excuse to talk about cats on the internet. So you'll remember from this um, diagram from the previous lecture. In early in development, the cell, the fertilized egg, is determined to be male or female by whether or not it inherited a Y chromosome. If it had two X's, then early in development, probably at a stage when only a few hundred cells are present, it each cell picks a random X to inactivate. Some cells will inactivate the X chromosome inherited from the mother, the maternal X chromosome. Some cells will inactivate the paternal X chromosome. And I'm a little vague about exactly when this happens because my colleagues who are expert in this field tell me that they still don't know exactly when this happens. But it's probably at a time when only a moderate number of cells are present, maybe only a few hundred cells. And then from each of these cells, each of which has inactivated a different X chromosome, many adult cells grow and these form patches of cells with different X chromosomes inactivated in the developing fetus and these chromosomes remain inactivated throughout life. So each cell, once the X chromosome is inactivated, it remains inactivated in that cell and all of that cell's descendants. So the consequence is that females typically have patches of cells that express um, their paternal X chromosome and other patches that express the maternal X chromosome. The only exception are the non-placental mammals, the marsupials and the monotremes, where often there are mechanisms for preferentially turning off one or the other of the X chromosomes. Now, it's hard to see these patches in humans because, in general, we don't have phenotypes that change the appearance of our surface for our body. To really discover these, part of the reason we don't know the distribution is because you basically have to cut us up and do enzyme assays on different tissues to figure out where the genes are being expressed. However, it's very clearly demonstrated in calico cats. Now, calico and tortoise shell cats, those, these terms both refer to cats that have patches of orange fur and patches of black fur. In a calico cat, there are also patches of white fur. Um, white patches are controlled by a different gene. In a tortoise shell cat, that term is applied to cats that don't have white patches. So calico and tortoise shell cats are female. They're always female. Um, and they're heterozygous. They have two X chromosomes because they're female. And their X chromosomes are heterozygous for an X chromosome locus called O. O for orange. And they have one orange allele, one allele that would produce orange fur, and one allele that would produce black fur. So patches of their fur express orange or black depending on which X was inactivated early in development. So I'll illustrate this with a little cartoon of cat cells. Here's the fertilized egg and it's already determined that this is going to grow into a female cat. It's got two X chromosomes, one carrying the orange allele, one carrying the black allele. This fertilized egg then divides many times, giving rise to a large cluster of cells in the embryo. And I've made these cells initially all brown to indicate that they're expressing genes from both the black allele chromosome and the orange allele chromosome. They're not actually expressing the pigment that will be in the fur yet because it's not a developmental stage where fur develops yet. But then 
each cell randomly inactivates one or the other chromosome. If it inactivates the orange chromosome, it's going to keep the black chromosome active. If it inactivates the black chromosome, it'll keep the orange chromosome active. And then embryonic development continues. Embryonic development is otherwise pretty much the same in males and females except for this step. And each of these patches, each of these cells, each cell in this developing embryo divide, continues dividing and dividing and dividing and gives rise to a patch of cells, a patch of tissue in the fetus. So we can think of each of these single cells as corresponding to a patch of cells in the developing fetus. And we can carry that on further and think about the mature cat. And we can connect the single cells that inactivated their axes to a patch of cells in the embryo to a patch of black fur in the adult cat. Um, maybe that's the cell that gave rise to those cells that gave rise to the black tip of the tail, for instance. So what we've done is we've simply taken the concept that we introduced in the previous lecture and we've made it a little more concrete by dealing with a specific example, um, that of the calico cat. Now coming up next, we're going to look at the other side of the differences in X chromosomes between males and females. The problem in males that arises from having only one copy of all the genes on the X chromosome. I hope to see you there.